a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Don Quixote Fully titled The Ingenious Nobleman Sir Quixote of La Mancha, is a Spanish novel by Miguel de Cervantes Saavedra. Published in two volumes, in 1605 and 1615, Don Quixote is considered the most influential work of literature from the Spanish Golden Age, and the entire Spanish literary canon. As a founding work of modern Western literature and one of the earliest canonical novels, it regularly appears high on lists of the greatest works of fiction ever published, such as the Book Club and World Library collection that cites Don Quixote as the author's choice for the best literary work ever written. The story follows the adventures of a noble named Alonso Quixano who reads so many chivalric romances that he loses his sanity and decides to set out to revive chivalry, undo wrongs, and bring justice to the world, under the name Don Quixote de la Mancha. He recruits a simple farmer, Sancho Panza, as his squire, who often employs a unique, earthy wit in dealing with Don Quixote's rhetorical orations on antiquated knighthood. Don Quixote, in the first part of the book, does not see the world for what it is and prefers to imagine that he is living out a knightly story. Throughout the novel, Cervantes uses such literary techniques as realism, meta-theater, and intertextuality. The book had a major influence on the literary community, as evidenced by direct references in Alexandre Dumas' The Three Musketeers, Mark Twain's Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and Edmund Rostand's Cyrano de Bergerac, as well as the word, quixotic, and the epithet, Lothario. The latter refers to a character in, El Corioso Impertinent, an intercalated story that appears in Part 1, Chapters 33-35. Arthur Schopenhauer cited Don Quixote as one of the four greatest novels ever written, along with Tristram Shandy Louisiana Nouvelle Eloise, and Wilhelm Meister's Leia Yara. Summary Cervantes wrote that the first chapters were taken from the Archive of La Mancha, and the rest were translated from Arabic by the Moorish author Said Hamid Ben in July. This metafictional trick appears to give a greater credibility to the text, implying that Don Quixote is a real character and that the events related truly occurred several decades prior to the recording of this account. However, it was also common practice in that era for fictional works to make some pretense of being factual, such as the common opening line of fairy tales, Once Upon a Time in a Land Far Away. In the course of their travels, the protagonists meet innkeepers, prostitutes, goatherders, soldiers, priests, escaped convicts and scorned lovers. The aforementioned characters sometimes tell tales that incorporate events from the real world, like the conquest of the Kingdom of Manila, or battles in the Eighty Years' War. Their encounters are magnified by Don Quixote's imagination into chivalrous quests. Don Quixote's tendency to intervene violently in matters irrelevant to himself and his habit of not paying debts, result in privations, injuries, and humiliations. Finally, Don Quixote is persuaded to return to his home village. The narrator hints that there was a third quest, but says that records of it have been lost. The First Sally, Chapters 1-5 Alonso Quixano, the protagonist of the novel, is a Hidalgo, nearing fifty years of age, living in an unnamed section of La Mancha with his niece and housekeeper, as well as a boy who is never heard of again after the first chapter. Although Quixano is usually a rational man, in keeping with the humoral theory of the time, not sleeping adequately dash, because he was reading, has caused his brain to dry. Quixano's temperament is thus choleric, the hot and dry humor. As a result, he is easily given to anger, and believes every word of these fictional books of chivalry to be true. Imitating the protagonists of these books, he decides to become a knight errant in search of adventure. To these ends, he dons an old suit of armor, renames himself Don Quixote, names his exhausted horse Rocinante, and designates Aldones Lorenzo, a neighboring farm girl, as his lady love, renaming her Dulcinea del Toboso, while she knows nothing of this. Expecting to become famous quickly, he arrives at an inn, which he believes to be a castle, calls the prostitutes he meets, ladies, and asks the innkeeper, whom he takes as the lord of the castle, to dub him a knight. He spends the night holding vigil over his armor and becomes involved in a fight with muleteers who try to remove his armor from the horse trough so that they can water their mules. In a pretended ceremony, the innkeeper dubs him a knight to be rid of him. 
and sends him on his way. Don Quixote next, frees, a young boy named Andras who is tied to a tree and beaten by his master, and makes his master swear to treat the boy fairly. But the boy's beating is continued as soon as Quixote leaves. Don Quixote then encounters traders from Toledo, who, insult, the imaginary Dulcinea. He attacks them, only to be severely beaten, and left on the side of the road, and is returned to his home by a neighboring peasant. Destruction of Don Quixote's Library Chapters 6 and 7 While Don Quixote is unconscious in his bed, his niece, the housekeeper, the parish curate and the local barber burn most of his chivalric and other books. A large part of this section consists of the priest deciding which books deserve to be burned and which to be saved. It is a scene of high comedy. If the books are so bad for morality, how does the priest know them well enough to describe every naughty scene? Even so, this gives an occasion for many comments on books Cervantes himself liked and disliked. For example, Cervantes' own pastoral novel La Galatea is saved, while the rather unbelievable romance Felix Mart de Hycania is burned. After the books are dealt with, they seal up the room which contained the library, later telling Don Quixote that it was the action of a wizard. The Second Sally After a short period of feigning health, Don Quixote requests his neighbor, Sancho Panza, to be his squire, promising him a petty governorship. Sancho is a poor and simple farmer, but more practical than the head in the clouds Don Quixote and agrees to the offer, sneaking away with Don Quixote in the early dawn. It is here that their famous adventures begin, starting with Don Quixote's attack on windmills that he believes to be ferocious giants. The two next encounter a group of friars accompanying a lady in a carriage. Don Quixote takes the friars to be enchanters who hold the lady captive knocks a friar from his horse, and is immediately challenged by an armed Basque traveling with the company. As he has no shield, the Basque uses a pillow to protect himself, which saves him when Don Quixote strikes him. Cervantes chooses this point, in the middle of the battle, to say that his source ends here. Soon, however, he resumes Don Quixote's adventures after a story about finding Arabic notebooks containing the rest of the story by Sid Hamid Ben Benengeli. The combat ends with the lady leaving her carriage and commanding those traveling with her to surrender to Don Quixote. The pastoral peregrinations Sancho and Don Quixote fall in with a group of goat herders. Don Quixote tells Sancho and the goat herders about the golden age of man, in which property does not exist and men live in peace. The goat herders invite the knight and Sancho to the funeral of Grisostomo, a former student who left his studies to become a shepherd after reading pastoral novels, seeking the shepherdess Marcella. At the funeral Marcella appears, vindicating herself from the bitter verses written about her by Grisostomo, and claiming her own autonomy and freedom from expectations put on her by pastoral clichés. She disappears into the woods, and Don Quixote and Sancho follow, ultimately giving up. The two dismount by a pond to rest. Some Galicians arrive to water their ponies, and Rocinante attempts to mate with the ponies. The Galicians hit Rocinante with clubs to dissuade him, whereupon Don Quixote tries to defend Rocinante. The Galicians beat Don Quixote and Sancho, leaving them in great pain. The inn after escaping the musketeers, Don Quixote and Sancho ride to a nearby inn. Once again, Don Quixote imagines the inn as a castle. Although Sancho is not quite convinced, Don Quixote is given a bed in a former hayloft, and Sancho sleeps on the rug next to the bed. They share the loft with the millet here. When night comes, Don Quixote imagines the servant girl at the inn, Helen, to be a beautiful princess, and makes her sit on his bed with him, scaring her. Seeing what is happening, the muleteer attacks Don Quixote, breaking the fragile bed and leading to a large and chaotic fight in which Don Quixote and Sancho are once again badly hurt. Don Quixote's explanation for everything is that they fought with an enchanted moor. He also believes that he can cure their wounds with a mixture he calls the balm of Far Arbras, which only makes them sick. Don Quixote and Sancho decide to leave the inn, but Quixote, following the example of the fictional knights, leaves without paying. Sancho, however, remains and ends up wrapped in a blanket and tossed up in the air by several mischievous guests at the inn, something that is often mentioned over the rest of the novel. After his release, he and Don Quixote continue their travels. The galley slaves and Cardinio after Don Quixote has adventures involving a dead body, a helmet, 
and freeing a group of galley slaves. He and Sancho wander into the Sierra Morena and there encounter the dejected Cardenio. Cardenio relates the first part of his story, in which he falls deeply in love with his childhood friend Lucinda, and is hired as the companion to the Duke's son, leading to his friendship with the Duke's younger son, Don Fernando. Cardenio confides in Don Fernando his love for Lucinda and the delays in their engagement, caused by Cardenio's desire to keep with tradition. After reading Cardenio's poems praising Lucinda, Don Fernando falls in love with her. Don Quixote interrupts when Cardenio suggests that his beloved may have become unfaithful after the formulaic stories of spurned lovers in chivalric novels. They get into a fight, ending with Cardenio beating all of them and walking away to the mountains. The priest, the barber, and Dorisha Quixote pines for Dulcinea, imitating Cardenio. Quixote sends Sancho to deliver a letter to Dulcinea, but instead Sancho finds the barber and priest and brings them to Quixote. The priest and barber make plans to trick Don Quixote to come home. They get the help of Dorisha, a woman who has been deceived by Don Fernando. She pretends that she is the princess Mycomacona and desperate to get Quixot help. Quixote runs into Andres, who insults his incompetence. Return to the inn the group returns to the previous inn where the priest tells the story of Anselmo while Quixote battles with wineskins. Dorisha is reunited with Don Fernando and Cardenio with Lucinda. A captive from Moorish lands arrives and is asked to tell the story of his life. A judge arrives and it is found that the captive is his long-lost brother, and the two are reunited. The ending an officer of the Santa Hermandad has a warrant for Quixot's arrest for freeing the galley slaves. The priest begs for the officer to have mercy on account of Quixote's insanity. The officer agrees, and Quixote is locked in a cage and made to think that it is an enchantment, and that there is a prophecy of his heroic return home. While traveling, the group stops to eat and lets Quixote out of the cage and he gets into a fight with a goat herd and with a group of pilgrims, who beat him into submission, and he is finally brought home. The narrator ends the story by saying that he has found manuscripts of Quixote's further adventures. Part 2 Although the two parts are now published as a single work, Don Quixote, Part 2 was a sequel published ten years after the original novel. While Part 1 was mostly farcical, the second half is more serious and philosophical about the theme of deception. Part 2 of Don Quixote explores the concept of a character understanding that he is written about, an idea much explored in the 20th century. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?